Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today on Honoring Black History. I'm Holly Baker. And I'm Erin Jenkins. For the next 30 minutes, we're sharing stories from across the East and beyond. We start here in Pitt County in the small town of Aden. Abandoned, forgotten, rediscovered, neglected. These are all words when people use when talking about the Aden African American Ancestral Cemetery or the 4AC Cemetery. As Nine on Your Side, Sarah Gray Ball reports, their descendants are working to uncover these people's past. A lot of these graves are not like they once was. Annie Edwards says she knew there was a cemetery off old NC-11. I knew it was a cemetery from a little girl growing up because my mom would talk about her baby being buried out here. Annie hasn't found her sister yet. I, I haven't found her grave yet, but I'm going to continue to look. Yeah. Maybe I might find it, then again I might not, but at least I know where her resting place is clean and beautiful. Angela Robertson is from Pitt County. She lived in Aden for two years while going to school at ECU. She learned of the rediscovered cemetery through a news article. My mother did not know about the cemetery. My grandmother, with whom I resided in Aden with when I was at ECU, had never told me about the cemetery. She knows she has ancestors buried here, though they don't share the same last name. And it's hidden now by the brush. But this is a Mills Memorial Stone. So what this tells us is that there are more Millses out he buried here whose names we do not know. Angela is a family researcher writing of her own kin. She says there are stories to be told about the lives of the people buried here. It's a, it's a lot at looking at death certificates, wow. birth certificates, Garden. marriage certificates to just feel out your family history. ECU anthropology professor Charles Ewan says there are around 400 graves recorded on the site. There's over 300 that are just depressions in the ground. I don't think we'll ever know who's in them. We'll know somebody's there, but we won't, we won't know their names. He says the cemetery isn't forgotten. We call these neglected cemeteries. Now, you'll have some people that remember and, and even come out. Um, but a lot of times they're older folks, and so they're not going to be the ones that are going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. For several years now, Ewan led ECU students researching, locating, and documenting those buried here. He says that work is winding down with plans to add a cemetery map with gravesite information online for people to look at. We'll participate in the cleanups. Uh, we'll help with the interpretation and stuff. But how they want it to look and uh, exactly what more to be done uh, is their decision. Angela says the answers to who these unmarked graves are could be closer than realized. We always talk with our families about our family history, but when you look at these other people that they were related to, now you might need to know that you need to talk with someone that doesn't share your last name, but they were related by friendship with your family and they have stories to tell you too. Through stories, oral history, word of mouth, Annie says she will find her sister. Maybe some elderly person that I run into might say, oh, that baby was buried near some of my people. And then I have an idea as to where the area is at. Staying in Aden, the Aden Museum is asking for your help. They need documents, artifacts, and stories of the historic black community in Aden. We love to receive documents when you're clearing out your house or from a family. If you have old newspapers, old photos, this is the kind of thing we need. All that's really important that we have it here. And so when anyone walks into the museum, they can see their grandmom or the great grandmom in Aiden Museum. If you would like to donate to the museum, we have their contact information and where to take your items over on our website at WNCT.com. Now to honoring the Marines who paved the way for future generations. Last year, Governor Roy Cooper proclaimed August 25th as Montford Point Marine Day. Nine on your side's Claire Curry was at the ceremony honoring those Marines in Jacksonville. This is not just 
black history or Marine Corps history. This is American history, and the world should know about the Muscle Corps Marines. In World War II, these true heroes stepped up to defend our country and Constitution, even though they were not treated as equals at the time. There's no such thing as a black Marine, brown, red, white, or yellow. We're all Marines. Inspiring the integration of all the armed forces in 1948. Today, over 50 Montfort Point Marines were recognized with Congressional Gold Medals for paving the way for black service members who came after them. I, like all, like all Americans, have an aversion to killing people. And so I'm glad that this medal was for humanitarian things and not for killing people. With North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein present to pay his respects. Not only did these recruits have to overcome the physical challenges that we all associate with becoming one of the first to fight, they were forcing people to see the content of their characters and not the color of their skin. As they are proud of their impact and change in history. And I'm glad I was one of them to be able to go ahead and join and, uh, and fight for my country and live on and carry on the tradition about the Marfa Point Marines. Hurrah, Simple Five Marines. Well, when we come back here on Honoring Black History, we are talking hair. How one local spa and its owner is working to cater to the needs of her clients and making sure their hair is healthier than ever. Honoring Black History. Also, tons of history and hair. Today we are going to the spa. Holly, you got a chance to catch up with him. Yes, one <laughs> spa owner here in the East is finding a way to help her clients feel beautiful inside and out. Hairstyles. All types of hairstyles. But are all hairstyles healthy? I'm not going to tell someone. Um, that needs their hair pressed a lot of times to go with the wash and go because that just may not be befitting for their lifestyle. Crystal Baldwin is the owner of Harmony Hair Spa. I am a natural hair specialist slash trichologist. I would say a holistic doctor. Um, so that's what trichology is. It is the study of the hair and scalp, but it's the holistic approach. But this isn't your regular hair salon. The hair spa, it goes a little bit more internally. We look at um, how stressed you are. We look at your eating habits. We look at different things that you may be struggling with to not allow your hair to flourish and grow the way that you want it to grow. Crystal also works with other specialists to help cater to the needs of her clients. I always have a dermatologist that I work for that can diagnose. So when they uh, diagnose the client, then I'm able to say, hey, this is what you need to change in your diet, or this is what I suggest. You you change with your diet, these are the hairstyles that you want to use, these are the different things that we need to follow so that we can have a success rate. With the dermatologist's diagnosis, Crystal can treat the client while giving them a memorable experience. We use FDA, um, medical lasers, we use um, ozone machines, different light therapies, um, different massaging techniques, different things like that that will help with those certain type of issues. Crystal has even gone the extra mile and created products that aid in healing her clients with conditions. Well, the product line that we're getting ready to launch, The Cure, <laughs> the way I came up with this product line is that I base it off of healing. So women go through a detox phase or any type of healing, even if you're going to a therapist, you go through detoxing, you go through purging, even down to working out, you go through detox and purging, then you go to the restoration part, then you go to the revitalized part. So I mimicked the baseline for healing. Harmony Hair Spa has made an impact because it goes beyond how your hair looks. It's also about how you are feeling inside. I'm making a difference in women's lives and I feel like I'm giving them hope, hope in their hair, hope to embrace themselves. And who doesn't love hair? Crystal continues to use her products to help heal her present and future clients. You can find Harmony Hair Spa at 2800 East 10th Street in Greenville.
An East Carolina University alum is now in Raleigh learning how to, to perfect the art of a haircut. Curtis Burston is at Harris Barber College, the oldest boarding barber school in the state. He's one of hundreds of men and women at the school. Now it first opened back in 1930 for only black men, but now it's open to all races and even women. Beyond learning just how to cut, there's another focus for students. A lot of people come in, the younger guys learn from the older guys, and uh, my barbers, uh, I tell them how important their appearance are because, like in this community here, here in Southeast Raleigh, uh, there's a lot of young men, a lot of kids coming here that uh, come from single homes. So uh, appearance and character is very important to me. As for Curtis, the history at the school and an earnest desire to fulfill his destiny is what's most cutting edge. Farmland has a lot of history, especially in the South. Still ahead on honoring black history, now some people are helping make sure a farm is still a promised land. Honoring black history, we salute Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by acknowledging those he inspired. Andrew Young is a civil rights leader, former congressman, mayor of Atlanta, and ambassador to the United Nations. He worked hand in hand with Dr. King. Honoring Black History. All throughout the South, acres of farmland can be found, especially here in eastern North Carolina. But in Georgia, one 40-acre farm is where two brothers have developed green thumbs and have nourished their neighbors for decades. But it's also land that was promised to each formerly enslaved family so that they might begin to build generational wealth. Kim Gumsby takes us to the promised land. This is a farm setting in, surrounded by a city. And if you look at it, the city now is enclosing on the farm. Produce as far as the eye can see. Known for its popular collard greens, the Promised Land Farm is steeped in history. We bought land, actually purchased it in 99, but I started farming it in 89. Meet Robert Johnson, affectionately known as Uncle Bob, and his brother William, Uncle Bill. They are the owners of this 31-acre oasis, one of the only black-owned farms in the area. It means a whole lot to have something that you, your hand, you work for. I don't know another black-owned farm here in Chatham County. I know, I know people have gardens, but an actual farm, I don't know any. You could say farming is in their blood, but it wasn't something they liked to do growing up. It's what they had to do to survive. I grew up on a farm in Nevernham County, raised up single parent, but my mother kept us together. And by being in Nevernham County, which is farming, we had to work on a farm. So I learned what I knew from farming with my mother. Today, farming is their passion. If you can learn to enjoy it, it's never worked. I remember saying I never worked a day on the farm which I learned what farming is all about. And just as rich as the soil they till is the story behind it. Local lore says at the end of the Civil War, the property was granted to the formerly enslaved Roderick Steele, through the 40 acres and a mule promise made by Union General William T. Sherman through his special field order number 15. His descendants kept the land until they sold it to the Johnson brothers in 1998. The brothers built this cottage from the ground up, initially for shelter. Today, it's gradually morphing into a makeshift museum full of keepsakes and heirlooms, reminders of their lineage. They include pictures like this one of his great grandparents, his grandparents, and his mother. There's also a collection of shirts they've worn through the years, symbols of the sweat equity put into the land. Now up in age, Uncle Bob at 77 and Uncle Bill at 79, the two are faced with challenges to maintain the farm. Enter Rodney Parker Jr. and his daughters, Rebecca and Ray. They visit the farm about once a week. 
It's a part of their homeschool curriculum. It's really been exciting, you know, for my kids to just see them a lot more comfortable um, digging in the sand. You know, I, I like to get dirt under my uh, nails and they, they enjoy to get their, you know, dirt under their nails too. They plant, prune, and then pick their own produce through the Promised Land's Rent-A-Row program. For a small fee, you can grow whatever you want, as long as it's legal in the state of Georgia. Outside of just eating better, um, just a sense of like family and like camaraderie. Um, my wife and I, we're not originally from Georgia, you know, so um, this feels like close to family. To the brothers Johnson, everyone is like kin. As for the farm's future, well, that remains unclear. One can only hope that the beautiful bounty of this promised land will be passed down to future generations. Kim Gusby, WSAV News 3. A book with the perfect cookie recipe. When we come back, look at how one local man is working to bring a smile to children's faces with the story of what pushes him to bake. Honoring Black History. If you've ever baked chocolate chip cookies, like I'm sure you have, Holly, mm -hmm. you know all of the typical ingredients. But as Nine of Your Science, Courtney Courtright tells us, a father from Wilson is sharing what he thinks might be the most important part of the recipe. We put them on the sheet. We're making a lot of cookies, okay? It's personal to Carl. I come from a, a one-parent household with just my mother. And so a father baking cookies is really, you know, important to my children as well because of, of me not having that. His love for baking grew in high school so and even more room. as an adult. When I was working a nine to five job, it was a little stressful. I kind of got burned out and then I still was baking. I said, you know what? Why not build my own dreams instead of working hard to build someone else's? He wrote his book, drawing inspiration from cooking with his sons. Showing my children how to bake, showing them what to do, showing them the steps, and a big thing, fatherhood is so important to me. Graham wants to help other families make those memories. The family base and the family structure is so important and it's so needed, and those memories will last forever. There's even a recipe in the book. My biggest dream from this is being able to give other families and fathers hopefully that experience so that way they want to do this with the children, they have those bonds. And in his recipe. They needed flour, salt, baking soda, vanilla and shrek. Is the most important ingredients, family and love. To be able to share that feeling, to give that feeling, that father feeling that's so, so needed. It's euphoric that I'm able to give that to my children. And so the story of Carl, Elijah and Jaden and Tristan. Baking cookies together, happily ever after. That's all the time we have for today. We hope you've enjoyed honoring black history, sharing our stories. And to see these stories again and so much more like them, just head over to WNCT.com. Thanks for joining us. We leave you today with the Soulful Riders. This black motorcycle club is one of the oldest existing groups in the country.